Or, Should we get started? Or... Sounds good to me. I'm ready. Okay, great. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, thanks um, for being with us and welcome to Tracy Childs, our presenter today. Um, I've known her, by the way, I met Tracy when she was about five, six years ago at Sharp Hospital. She was teaching a class with Dr. Neil Barnard of the Barnard Medical Center in Washington, DC. And that was my initial introduction. And I've been really connected and impressed um, for many years. Uh, she's, she does a terrific job. Um, she's the co-founder, um, the chef and director of a company called Tracy's Real Foods. It's a whole foods plant-based company um, that actually ships foods like this around the country. Uh, Tracy is a certified nutritional consultant, and she holds a certificate uh, in plant-based nutrition from eCornell. Uh, she's also taught uh, nutrition and cooking for over a decade as a Food for Life instructor, certified with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. That's Neil Barnard, president from the Barnard Medical Center. And as the founder and director of, director of Veg Appeal in San Diego, she uh, offers educational cooking classes, corporate wellness, individual and cooking lessons, store tours, tours, I was not aware of that, and uh, personal health coaching. And she's also the founder and director of Plant Diego, a San Diego-based nonprofit organization inspired by the movie plant pure nation to educate and support people um, in a living a health in living a healthy whole food plant based based lifestyle in addition she has a she's a cookbook author and she's contributed over 100 recipes for the book handbook for higher consciousness she's also a mom her son uh, is an attorney in Los Angeles, he actually graduated from the University of Michigan, clerked for a federal judge, and she also has a daughter who lives in Los Angeles, who works in the entertainment kind of business. And so welcome, Tracy Childs. Thanks for being here, Tracy. Thank you so much, Gary, for inviting me. Everybody see and hear okay? Hey, let me mention one other thing before you get started, and that is the questions. If you could please, as we go along, just put them on the chat and um, I will try to monitor them and make them known and available to Tracy because she's in her kitchen. She's really not in a position to access a computer the way the rest of us are. So, hey, Tracy, thanks and, and look forward to this. Thanks for being here. Yeah, hey, so um, uh, this is a huge passion of mine. I've got a presentation coming up that we're gonna present, but I did want to get some things started because I do like to show everything I can um, ahead and show you guys all the details and how it works. So today I'm doing something that is near and dear to my heart, which is getting those foods that we know are healthy out of the fridge, out of the pantry, getting them prepped, getting them in the fridge and getting them ready to consume during the week. So, you know, like, look at this. What good does this do, guys, if it's in your fridge? This is uh, amazing kale, and it's so good for you. We're going to talk about the benefits, but if it's in a bag in the fridge like this, what good is it? So we're going to talk about um, how you can get that ready super easy, super fast. Um, again, also your portobello mushrooms. Those are another amazing food. And are they, how are they like this? No, you got to cook them. You got to do something with them. So so these are just my personal, um, over the years, things that I have decided that I'm gonna always have prepped or try to always have prepped here at home for quick meals. And I want you to see what I do and then I want you to personalize it, okay? So I do wanna start some things right now. Like I said, I like to show as much as possible. Okay, so what are these? Can you guys see lentils? These are lentils but they're different than what you buy in a store this is what you're going to get in a store right is if you buy the uh, dried lentils they're raw and they're hard and again if they're in the pantry like that you can't do anything with them but if you add a little water to them 
this are, these are just soaked. They're not cooked, but they're soaked and they're actually edible. <laughs> just soaked. So I soaked them today. I soaked them for a few hours. And guess what happens when you soak a bean? It, it actually starts to sprout because they're seeds. They're seeds. So um, let's see if you can see that. I'll find one. If I let them sit here for longer, they'll really start to sprout. So these are the basis of my products that I make, lentils. And you guys see that? I don't know. It's a little hard to see, but um, oh, here's a great example of one that sprouted. So they come to life. And when things sprout like this, they are um, much healthier, much um, more bioavailable. So what I've done is I've soaked them and I've um, got them <laughs> plumped up. But then what I do is I add my water to it. Show you this in a second. Let me see if I can show you here. I just have to turn things around. All right, so I just soaked them. I'm gonna add as much water to cover. So soak, I just covered them with water. You gotta cover them by a couple inches because they expand. You saw how much bigger they get, right? I'm gonna bump it up as high as possible. So listen, I, I make a lot of lentils because look at this. This is um, one of my products, Tracy's Real Foods. Um, Cookies and first ingredient, lentils. Unbelievable, cookies that have lentils. I'm gonna talk more about lentils and why they're so important and why they're good, but I did wanna get them started here. And another thing I wanna get started is my quinoa. Again, I soak my quinoa. You see that? I soak it. Um, so now quinoa needs to be rinsed and all your grains and your beans should be rinsed. So I, and you can see it actually kind of starts to ferment here. This has just been soaking for like a few hours. You know, even if you soak it for um, 10 minutes, it's going to be great. So um, I'll show you here. So quinoa is a wonderful gluten-free alkalizing grain. And um, some of the other grains uh, that I love are sorghum, sorghum. I know that's a weird one. People don't know about that one. Oats. I like to get oats and use those for breakfast. And then another basis of my products is buckwheat. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So, so I can get these out of the way now. Show you guys. Here we go. Okay, so when I um, soak my quinoa, um, then I, I just drain it, get it drained. And this is a good way to clean your grains too, guys. And now if you wanted to, you could soak this, you could keep it in the refrigerator. Of course, this is gonna sprout too, just like the lentils do. But you can keep this in the refrigerator soaked and then it's gonna cook really fast. So this, it, it, it not only does it make it cook faster, it's better for you. And it um, uh, makes more. You get more for bang for your buck, which is cool. I think when you cook it, like without soaking it, you're gonna get uh, about um, maybe three cups. And I can get like five cups of quinoa from one, one cup of quinoa. So this is a cup and a half. When you do soak it, you can add less water. So like, so I did a cup and a half. Usually you would add three cups, right? If you hadn't soaked it. So I'm just gonna add like two and a half cups. And you guys see that okay? And um, what is this? Turmeric. I add turmeric to everything. We're gonna talk about that as a superfood. So I add like a half of a teaspoon of turmeric and I add pepper, black pepper, because black pepper actually helps your body to maintain uh, the curcumin, which is the uh, component in the turmeric that is anti-inflammatory. <coughs> okay. 
Hey, Tracy, the question, there's a question on the chat. Do you ever cook with an Instapot? Oh, um, yes, I do. All I do. Yes, I do. All right, so I got, um, got our quinoa over here. Now I'm gonna get, let, get that up to a boil and then um, just let it cook for about 10 minutes. So I wanted to get that going. Just gotta watch it doesn't boil over. I got a super burner here. It's really convenient, but <laughs> yeah, I can get a little bit of a boil over sometimes. So um, yeah, so Instant Pot, I do use, I love it. I use it for um, mostly for beans and I've, I've developed some really good soup recipes. If you check my blog um, at tracysrealfoods.com, just click on blog. I've got a terrific recipe for um, soy, uh, well, it's called taco, taco soup, and it has soy curls in it. And they're so much like chicken that it's amazing. They have an amazing texture. It explains all about that. So yes, yes, I love it. All right, I'm gonna put my lid on my lentil. So I got the lentils going. The other thing I wanna get going that takes a little bit of time. So you saw how simple all this stuff is and I'm all about simple. Um, I love fun recipes too. And I love like making my own egg rolls, making things from scratch, but from day to day, you know, what do we need? We all need simple go-to recipes that can be um, fast, easy. And then like, I like to put the stuff I like to eat some of it maybe that day, but also make extra and prep it and have it ready to go. So these are my portobello mushrooms. And I'm just gonna roast them. I call them portobello steaks. Can you see those? Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, mushrooms are amazing. Uh, we're gonna talk about that as a superfood here pretty soon. I just wanna get them going. Now, this, this, this is the stem. Usually they have a really big stem. Yeah, and um, I like to actually take the stem out because then I can um, put some flavoring in here. I take the stem out, but I roast the stem too. Do not throw away the stem. They are, um, look at that, look at that texture. It's like a meaty texture when it gets roasted and you can put it in tacos, you'll think it's like you're having, I don't know, some kind of meat. <laughs> I've been a vegetarian since I was 17 and uh, vegan since um, 1990. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's been a while since I've had meat. Okay, so. Um, hey, Tracy, I yes. had one other question about why you use cold water to soak um, the, the grains. Cold water. Oh, um, you know what? Hot water speeds things up. So if you're in a hurry, definitely use hot water. Okay, so say you want to um, you want to make quinoa. You just didn't think about it until before. Go ahead and pour, get some hot water, pour it on the quinoa, let it stir it. Um, make sure you get uh, those components out that you don't want. It's called I don't remember the name of the um, the component that's on the outside of the quinoa, and then you can drain it, rinse it, and um, then cook it. So. So for my mushrooms, what I, I, I have a recipe and I used to put lots of different other things on here. You know what, these days I keep it super simple. I just put a little bit of balsamic in there, just kind of in the center, go like this. And then I put it in the oven at 400 degrees. And again, I just leave these guys. I did put a little coating of oil here. I don't use much oil at all but um, I don't, I just hit make the cleanup better. I put a little coating here and I'll just pop that in the oven. Okay, so my uh, quinoa can go boil and I turned that down. Uh, lentils aren't boiling yet. You can see they're not boiling quite yet, but when they come to a boil, um, literally after you soak them, it's fine. You know, if you don't soak them, it probably take about a half an hour to 45 minutes to make your lentils. But if you soak them ahead of time, and again, you can soak them, um, you can soak them with hot water. It's going to speed it up, or you can soak them, um, and put it in the fridge in a bag or something and then make it. So, um, you know, as long, but once you do add water to something, 
it could go bad, right? So um, once you process anything or any do anything to a whole food, it could go bad. So you want to uh, refrigerate, all right? But they're, you know, of course they're shelf stable until you start doing something to them. Okay, so this is um, gonna put that in the uh, over on the other side. For a sec. I'm gonna put that on my super burner, get it boiling. Because I wanna use this stuff. Hey, Tracy, a question about soaking. I've been used to soaking my things, my grains overnight with cold water. Should I put right. that in the refrigerator? Or is it okay overnight to just leave them out? Uh, oh, yeah, okay. no, it's fine overnight. It's fine um, throughout the day, even if you, yeah, you can soak them for like 24 hours. Um, but, you know, if they do get a little slimy, make sure you rinse them. But when you, um, when you cook them, you know, obviously they're gonna be cooked for a long period of time at a very high temperature. It's gonna kill any bacteria that has formed. So the only danger is if you, um, you know, let them sit up too long and then you consume it raw, then no. Don't wanna do that. <laughs> uh, Would kill bacteria and viruses. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm just watching my lentils over here. Um, just want to get them to a boil on my super burner. And um, then I will turn it down. But yeah, uh, I, do, I don't think I finished my, my thought there. Yes. Yeah, so 45 minutes to a half hour, if you don't soak, if you soak them, and which is what I do when I make my cookies, I soak them ahead, sprout them. They're healthier that way. And um, really just bring it to a boil and let it cook for a little bit. They really expand. And um, then I just drain them. So uh, maybe five minutes after you, it takes a while to come to boil if you're making a huge amount like I do. And then, um, yeah, just about five minutes. And then I, you know, make sure they're soft. Different lentils are different ways. Like, um, so this is a, one of my other favorite lentils. This is a, can you guys see that? Beluga lentils. These are small little guys and they cook in about a half hour and they do not expand or, um, get kind of really super soft like the other lentils do. So, um, okay, so one other thing I do, um, while that's coming to a boil, watching it, turn it down, uh, onions. Well, actually, let's get to the presentation now. Yes. So, Micah, if you could start the presentation and then I'll, I'll uh, the rest of the stuff doesn't take too long. Okay. Hey. Thank you. All right. So here we are, super prepped. And again, um, this is my passion. I have actually three ebooks that I wrote with Jennifer. You're, you know, Jennifer, um, <clears throat> who used to be my business partner with Veg Appeal. And we wrote three uh, books all about being prepped ahead and creating these superfoods or fo different foods, whole foods, whole plant foods, and having them stored and then some meals you can make from it. So um, we'll talk about that, but I want you guys to have access to those books too. So go ahead and change screen, please. Next page. Yeah. So this is me and I'm always drinking green smoothies as much as I can. <laughs> I'm not going to make one today, but, um, they're one of my favorite things to, um, actually have prepped ahead of time too. Um, so I've been making this, uh, healthy and eating healthy and sustainable eating a priority, uh, about since 1990. Um, but before that I was even 1979, eight, 78, I became vegetarian when I was 17. I'm dating myself here, but, <laughs> um, and, uh, just always love that lifestyle and love sharing it. And, um, and like Gary said, I've been teaching the nutrition with optimal health since 2005. Um, I'm a coach. I can help people in person and remotely. I'm also a chef. Um, so I can create, uh, you know, meals for people here locally in San Diego, you know, usually for special occasions and do some catering. Um, and I, I'm a founder of Plant Diego in 2015. Next. And so um, in, in response to the pandemic, 
since we couldn't have our in-person classes anymore, my husband helps me with my business quite a bit. Um, we decided let's go ahead and start this whole food plant-based food company. We were insane, but we did it. <laughs> and it's been amazing. It's been a great journey. And um, I, what I do is I, I offer um, some snacks, some whole food plant-based snacks. So I'll, I'll show these later. I guess you can't see them, but um, pizza crackers, granolas, my son, who's a lawyer, loves the granola, the cookies, um, muffins, stuff like that. And, and the reason is because the world needs more convenient, healthy, guilt-free foods. There's not a lot out there. Next. So people are confused, right? Like, what is a healthy diet anyway? Um, it, I see so much out there and so many people adopting these diets that I think are um, not sustainable. And I just wonder why they're doing them because they're high in fat, low in nutrition. Um, you know, they may work for a little while to get you to whatever goal you're getting to. But to me, this is the most sustainable um, guilt-free way of eating that is uh, so tasty. And, and, it, and there's a world of foods that are available. So what I do is I, I keep it whole, I keep it simple, I keep it plant-based, and I always focus on those nutrient-dense foods. And that's where we're getting to the superfoods. Now, superfoods, a lot of people think, oh, oh, it's that stuff that they add to my smoothie at that smoothie bar that costs me $23 or something like that. Well, to me, no, that's not sustainable. That's not something I'm gonna do is keep purchasing these powdered things, um, whether they're whatever they are, protein powder or amla or um, moringa or something, you know, all those different things. I'm not saying those are bad. Well, I'm, I'm not into protein powder, but the other, you know, powders aren't a bad thing, but I want it to be part of my meals. I don't want to have to make an effort to include um, superfoods every day. So, and I'm also about um, being realistic and saying, you know, okay, these are my choices for superfoods. They may not be your choices for superfoods, but I want to share with you, um, you know, the way I do it and what I found through my research and, um, and keeping it nutrient dense is I'll show you, I'll tell you why that's really important. So next slide. So there's an advantage to this whole food plant-based. Who's I don't know if everybody's out there has heard of whole food plant-based. I know it's it's um, been a lot of studies on it, and a lot of people are adopting this, and a lot of doctors are actually recommending that you uh, adopt a whole food plant-based diet. Especially, I'm finding that cardiologists are starting to really get on board because. Guess what? When you have a heart issue and um, something's clogging it up, it's from your food that you're eating. And so when you um, can adopt a whole food plant-based diet, you can start to reverse that. You can actually start to reverse the artery damage that's happening and um, getting and clean it out. And, um, you know, more and more doctors, I mean, it's a lot of them aren't trained that way. And we have to remember that, that doctors haven't focused on nutrition for um, their careers. They focused on a lot of other things. But um, in general, some of them are starting to educate themselves and they're getting out there and, and really being outspoken about it. So it's great. So um, yeah, and yes, like I said in there, COVID-19 also, um, you can help you to deal with it if you do happen to get it, to, um, to have a whole food plant-based diet. Um, protein, no problem at all. Uh, we'll talk about that. Your gut health is so important. and because you're going to increase the amount of fiber you're eating automatically by keeping it whole, um, your gut's going to be happy. It may be unhappy at first <laughs> if you're eating a lot of processed foods and you're trying to switch over, just take it slowly. But in general, um, you know, you're going to have more regular bowel movements. You're, it, things are just going to be so much better. Um, it can help you maintain your optimal weight. And that's what's really cool is you don't even have to think about it. Um, so many people are concerned with their weight and um, trying all these different fad diets and things like that. Well, if you just move towards a whole food plant-based diet, um, you know, it may not happen as fast as you, as some other crash diet might. This is not a crash diet, by the way. You can eat as much as you want. 
but it's sustainable. Um, you can get better energy, of course, because these foods are energizing. They're healthy, automatically gonna increase your nutrition. Food tastes amazing. Um, your taste buds may take a little bit of time to adjust, but there's once you get into it and find these amazing recipes and flavors that you love, you'll find out that you wish you'd done it way before you did it. Um, and it's just an awesome lifestyle. You know, you really feel good about helping the planet. You're getting away from the foods that damage the planet and you're also helping the animals too. So it's great. Thank you. All right. And so is there a disadvantage? Well, you're going to need to get in the kitchen. <laughs> Most likely a lot of people don't cook these days. Um, unless I say you're a millionaire or married to a whole food plant-based chef. And listen, my husband, he gets some dirty looks sometimes. I'm just saying, <laughs> but even if you're a millionaire, you may not be able to find the right person to cook for you. So, um, it's really just great to educate yourself and and you know what? It's a secret. It's fun. Now, you may need about 21 days for taste adjust, uh, adjustment. And you don't want to um, tease your taste buds. You want to, as much as you can, go for this and give it 21 days. Um, the PCRM has a 21-day kickstart, which is amazing. So it's good. it gives you all you need, recipes, um, shopping lists and videos. And, um, and at the beginning of the year, I did 21 days with my friend Lisa and other chefs and um, on the Jane Unchained, which is where I do my Facebook lives a lot. So janeunchained.com, it's right there. You can get those 21 days and see the videos and the recipes are there. And, but if you don't do that, then it's pcrm.org or 21 day kickstart.org or .org, I think. Anyway, um, just Google 21 day kickstart. You won't be, you won't be sorry, but you need to be gentle on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Um, make a plan and also find those go-to recipes, whatever they are. Um, like I'm trying to help you here. These are what I, my favorites over time. You could use mine and then you could um, find your own favorites. Next slide. Okay, so superfoods, what are they? Really depends on who you're talking to. Like I said, there's gonna be companies out there that are marketing all sorts of powders and concoctions. Um, I don't buy those things usually. I just, like I said, I don't wanna spend extra money on that. I want to spend money on real food and um, have that be enough. So that's my focus. And um, there's new opinions. And my opinion is, like I said, do your research, keep it simple, and then um, feel free to personalize it. And here are some great ideas. So I wanna show you some, some of, if you haven't heard of Dr. Michael Greger, um, I'm gonna send you that link uh, right there to watch a video on the Daily Dozen. So that's, Dr. Michael Greger has Nutrition Facts. He does uh, scours research. Um, he's, and he does um, videos every day about um, nutrition science. And so from his research, these are his superfoods, his daily dozen that he recommends you have every day. Mm -hmm. Next is the G-Box. And this is Dr. Joel Furman. I used to work for him. He actually has a retreat not far from me in San Diego. I was a chef for him and um, he keeps it really simple, greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And those are also included in my um, superfood, my Tracy's 12, I'm gonna introduce to you. Um, but I expanded a little bit, but those are what he thinks are, are what from science says that those are the best anti-cancer foods, G-bombs. And you know what, when you're talking anti-cancer foods, we're talking foods that are good for, um, most ailments, right? Diabetes, heart disease, but, you know, you really just want to have high nutrition. So next. Um, Tracy, there was a, qu yes. there's a question by Dean Rallis to everyone. Will, yes. the presenta will this presentation be available to us by email or download? Uh, right. Mike, so, yeah. If it's Micah, gonna be on YouTube, right? It'll be on yeah. YouTube. Yes, yes. Yeah, and Micah can share that link, okay. Um, 
which is wonderful. So uh, Nutrition Rainbow, this is, I've carted something around like this, a big poster and Nutrition Rainbow to all of my fairs I've gone to uh, for promoting my business. And um, this is through the PCRM. Again, I'm a certified Food for Life instructor with them. And this is amazing. You can Google the Nutrition Rainbow PCRM, get that downloaded. It's great. And um, just shows you all of how the colorful foods are so good for you. And it's just, yeah. And so um, just to bring it all together, think about the rainbow on your plate. You're going to be satisfied with less food, less cravings. Why? Because you're going to be meeting your nutritional needs. Um, the thing is, is that when, you know, when you eat an Oreo, okay, it tastes good, but what are you doing? You're not meeting your nutritional needs. So why do you go to another Oreo? Well, yeah, it tastes good, but also because your body hasn't been, hasn't been given anything. So you, you'll just keep eating. So um, that goes for any junk food. Basically, you're just going to keep eating it because your body's going to say, Hey, you didn't give me anything. So when you eat this way, you're going to get less cravings. Um, you're going to get good microbiota, which is your gut bacteria. And guess what? It can actually raise your metabolism. So you can lose weight without exercise. Woohoo! <laughs> And so here you go. This is my Tracy's 12 that I came up with. And like I said, I don't really say, oh, you got to eat these every day. But these are the foods that I try to, to prep ahead and keep them on hand. OK, so because they are what works for me and my family and uh, my husband. For instance, tofu, my family, we love tofu. We eat a lot of tofu. My kids were raised on it. So um, Guess what, people, there's all this debate about it. You know what, it does not cause cancer. People who have had breast cancer can definitely eat soy. It's actually beneficial. Um, there's a link I'll give you um, as part of my Tracy's 12 um, information. Uh, tempeh, edamame, great for bone health, heart health, and, and PCRM is doing some amazing studies on menopause and um, soy and how it can actually decrease your uh, hot flashes. Woo, yay. Um, uh, orange veggies, sweet potatoes, carrots, pumpkin, uh, red veggies and watermelon, lycopene, which is an antioxidant with many health benefits, including sun protection, heart and prostate health. Um, beans and lentils, of course, those are amazing for um, for fiber, protein, very satiating, blood sugar control, anti-diabetic, turmeric, anti-inflammatory. I don't need to say more. It is something you should add to everything you can. Um, I found it actually has a media effect on my breathing. Um, I get, sometimes I get like uh, uh, exercise induced asthma, but if I take a little turmeric before I go, I breathe clearly. So that just shows you how amazing it is. Um, onions, they're great for your gut, great anti-cancer food. Cruciferous veggies, can't say enough. Plant-based calcium, definitely try to eat them every day. Hormone control can get rid of excess hormones in your blood. Um, amazing for your heart. I have a great handout on those that I will send to you. Um, mushrooms, uh, cancer prevention, great for your immunity. Purple, berries, beets, red cabbage, uh, cell repair, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular, neuro neurological diseases, green tea. So green tea, great for your brain function, can actually help you get rid of fat, um, help you lose weight. So I drink green tea every day. Um, I'll show you when the video starts again, my green tea idea. Well, let me just tell you, um, I... Uh, <laughs> I make a green tea every day and I bring it with me whenever we're on the go. Um, that's my habit I've gotten into. And I, um, that's how I, how I get my green tea. And I actually add a little lemon to it. That actually helps with the um, antioxidants. Flax, hemp, chia seeds and other seeds, omega-3 fatty acids, great for brain health, great for your whole food fats, great for your heart, um, and quinoa and other alkaline grains, like I showed you, um, millet, I didn't show you millet, but sorghum, I'm going to show you sorghum in a second, 
Um, quinoa. Of course, I didn't turn it on. Hold on. <laughs> a little distracted. Good thing it's soaked. Should take just a few minutes. Um, and that's it. Those are the things that I keep prepped in, in the fridge. And so for today, um, I did my cooked lentils. Um, uh, there's a dressing. Actually, I'm going to give you the recipe for that. I couldn't fit it in. Um, I'm going to show you how to make greens really fast, marinated onions, sweet potato toast, um, oh, an amazing dressing with miso and maple, uh, portobello steaks I just showed you, hemp oat milk, uh, quinoa we are doing, and a chia pudding. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> And then from there, you can make these and more. So um, those are some ideas. I'm going to show you a couple of those things. And let's go. Oh, let's keep in touch. So I want to go ahead and say this just in case people have to tune out. Um, you can go to tracysrealfoods.com and uh, sign up for my newsletter. Everybody that signs up for my newsletter in the next couple of days, I'm going to be emailing you. Um, these resources. And you can also go to our website and get 10% off using the code LAW10. And then we ship nationwide amazing gifts. And um, also vegappeal.com is where I do my cooking and nutrition coaching info. And again, plant Diego, plantdiego.com. All right. And then questions will be after. So, and of course, put them in the chat. So um, let's go back to the cooking. All right, so, uh, oh yes, I got this going. So I want to um, show you what I do with onions. Okay, so um, where are we? Oh yeah, so onions, I use red onions. I'm gonna use half of the onion in my peel off I'm making. And a lot of times I use half an onion. What I do with the other half is I usually cut it into pieces, little, slices and then I just marinate it. And I'll show you this after. This is a, amazing, um, just to keep some little onions on hand to add to your finished dishes. Um, I just marinate with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and water. So I use water. I don't wanna use all apple cider vinegar. And then I just keep that in the fridge and it's ready to go. Um, and then I use it for um, all kinds of things. Like I said, a great garnish. Um, okay. Okay. So I'm going to get my water boiling here, but I want to show you also a go-to dressing that's super easy. Sauce, you can use it for lots of different things. And it's, I call it my maple mustard sauce. And let's go down here again so you can see, hopefully. So this is miso. Oh, let me get the miso out to show you. For those of you who aren't just familiar. Miso is one of my favorite flavors. It, um, you can get it usually in like, sprouts and near the vegetarian vegan stuff. Um, it's a paste, it's got that umami flavor. And what I'm doing is just creating a quick maple turmeric glaze. So I've got this maple syrup, it's got the turmeric in it. Again, I'm gonna add some pepper. Let me know when you can't see. And um, I add in my miso. So I've got um, about two tablespoons of maple syrup. You can use um, date syrup too, any kind of liquid sweet sweetener, and or you could use a little water and coconut sugar, and then add in the miso. So this is very similar to what I do also with mustard. Um, I love Dijon mustard. And I do very, very similar with, um, with this is my favorite one from Trader Joe's. And I just don't add the vinegar. I'm gonna add a little vinegar here. 
into this one, like about a tablespoon of vinegar, because uh, there's no vinegar in the um, miso. And I love a little tart in there. So you can add, of course, lemon juice, um, but it's really just about balancing your flavors. And um, I'm gonna use this to make a tempeh dish. Okay. And um, so that's ready. So then I just keep this in the fridge too, and you can pour it on your salads. You can use it to um, coat like broccoli and roast it before roasting um, or for Brussels sprouts, uh, amazing, or just use it. Um, the other thing I like to do is sweet potatoes. So um, sweet potatoes, you can see amazing. They're so colorful. And what I do is I just cut them in slices. This is one of those things I get done ahead of time, guys. Cut them in slices, cut them all in slices. And I like to get a big one like this for this because I, I like to make potato, sweet potato toast. And then I put them in the oven and I have this. So I just put them in the oven at like 375 for uh, about 20 minutes, flip them over another 10 minutes. If you want to crisp them up, you can. I don't really care about that, so I don't. But um, now they're done. And so you can cut these up and add them to salads. Uh, you can do all kinds of things with them. And it's just the easiest, most simple thing to do, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm working on boiling my water. I had it boiling, but then it's not boiling anymore. Hey, Tracy, um, Jillian had asked to have, have you send the recipe for the dressing? Yeah, I can. I can't do it now. Right. But. No, I got <laughs> it. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to show you guys is a dessert. So while all my water is getting boiling, I'm going to just go ahead and make a quick um, pudding. So Vitamix is going to be over here. So we're working over here now. Can you guys see all those ingredients over here? So I'm using um, uh, berries. So berries are purple, of course, and one of our superfoods. And these are just from Trader Joe's. You can get these amazing organic berries. And um, chia pudding is one of the fast, fastest, easiest things you can make. The first thing what I like to do is make my milk. I know people think I'm crazy. I like to make my own um, plant-based milks because they're easy and cheap. Um, and what I do is I just pour in the water. All right, so you can see, let me see if I can make it a little better here. So you can see me. Okay, so pour in the water, about three cups of water. This is a hemp oat milk. So I'm using my hemp seeds. So I talked about the, those are amazing source of plant-based protein, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, they have my Costco, so put those in there, and oats. So I'm using oat flour. I've discovered that oat flour is great. This is, I'm not going to even um, have to strain this, you guys. You don't have to strain it. This also, the recipe is on my uh, blog. The maple um, dressing recipe also is on my blog, actually, by the way. I just put it there. So you can add some vanilla if you want. You can add um, all kinds of stuff. You wanna just keep it plain, you just do that. You just put your hemp seeds, your water, and your oat flour, and then you just blend it up. these containers. I just keep it in the container here. All right. And then you have your milk ready, just like the old fashioned milk 
milk jar, milk bottle, right? <laughs> That's a reusing a container. All right. I don't really need to clean it out because now I'm going to use that to make my berry pudding. So here's my berries. They're thawed out a little bit. Oh, and then I'm going to use this to measure water, about two cups of water. So it's two cups of berries, two cups of water. I mean, milk, water that I made into milk. And your chia seeds. So you're getting a double whammy here on this dessert. And should you get a delicious dessert and you're getting more omega-3 fatty acids. Chia seeds are amazing cleansing food. Um, this is a half a cup. I'm gonna add some of it and then I can keep adding more if I need it. Kind of depends on how frozen the berries are too. And then uh, vanilla. Cinnamon, because I love cinnamon and some dates. So I'm just about a handful of dates. Dates are what I use sweetening all my foods. Um, they're a whole food, plant-based, amazing sweetener. And uh, they have a great source of potassium. They have um, fiber. That's a guilt-free sweetener. Yay. Okay, now we'll blend that. Now a chia pudding, sometimes you can, you can um, let, the, let the chia seeds bloom themselves or you can blend it. I always debate between those two. Okay, I can, you know what, it gets thicker um, in the fridge, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my seeds. And I had a bowl somewhere, a little bowl. Oh, I can just use this. So here we go with our nice, now, like I said, it's gonna thicken up a lot in the fridge and I didn't blend it like completely. It's got still got some little chia seeds there, but um, that's okay. And this is my uh, coconut cacao granola that I make for my company. Coconut, it's like a buckwheat based coconut date flavor, date sweetened. And guess what? It's amazing on here. So you can just make yourself an amazing dessert. It's kind of like right now, it's kind of like yogurt consistency, but it'll thicken up. All right, so there you go, dessert taken care of. Um, all right, so now we have our, uh, that's, and that should last you a week, you guys, hopefully. So that, can you see my um, pan here? Oh, there we go. So um, again with the kale, I've discovered that you can uh, prep your kale ahead of time like this and um, you just have it on hand. And the easiest thing, you don't even have to wash this because it's going into boiling water, okay? And it'll get clean, believe me. Uh, take the stem, hold on to the stem and then strip your kale. Then you could massage your kale, strip and massage, but in this case, we're just gonna chop. Um, massaging is if you're gonna use it in a salad or something like that, all right? So then I just give it some bite-sized pieces. Sometimes when I'm in a big hurry, I just throw it in without chopping it, you guys. Um, now, I throw it in the hot water. So I'm, I make sure my water is boiling. Okay, so let me get a little closer. Make sure it's boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole, all of it in. I already did a little bit of it. This tool, this is called a wire strainer and it is amazing. It works great. And, um, 
I just immerse it completely in the water. Can you see all that, you guys? Uh, immerse your kale. Now, I, I do this for broccoli. Um, I do it for kale. I do it for Brussels sprouts. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're just much more edible once you get them cooked. And they are an amazing superfood. They're really great plant-based calcium. Like I said, they're, um, get, uh, if you follow Dr. Uh, Caldwell Esselstyn, who wrote Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, he recommends that you um, consume a, a leafy green like this six times a day if you have heart disease. And most of us, frankly, do have heart disease. If you're not following this type of diet, almost all Americans have some sort of artery clogging. When you get an artery and you, a clog and you get a stent or something like that, that's just a band-aid. Your whole heart is gonna be diseased if you get a heart attack. So um, this is the systemic way to, um, to help your body. All right, so look what happened. It turned beautiful green. So then I just put it in my little setup here, let it drain really well. I also do this with potatoes, like Yukon Gold potatoes, or red potatoes, just immerse them in the water. Then they're ready to um, do all kinds of stuff with them. I roast them that way, it's much faster. Toss them with that, that glaze I just made, um, roast them, yum. And that, I do that with Brussels sprouts too. Instead of roasting them raw, I roast them after parboiling them and uh, it's much better, much faster. Okay, so now we have our kale. And this, I think, is a game changer for a lot of people. All right, doing some rearranging over here a little bit. Get this guy over here. Okay. So I want to show you, um, after you got your things prepped, there's a couple recipes you can make and they're super easy. These are just go-to meals. And once you have everything ready, Where's my, yeah. Once you have um, everything ready, you can, you know, these can be just quick um, weekday meals. So, and you know, a lot of us are working at home now um, a lot more. And so there's really no excuse. <laughs> you, can, um, you can do this while thinking about that law thing that you have to think about. <laughs> And once you do it, you know, you're going to be um, getting better at it, too. You're going to find that these are your go-to recipes, and you, um, you can do them without thinking. So that's really nice. Okay, so this is a, a pilaf. It's a, a lentil quinoa pilaf with um, uh, all, some veggies added. And I just want to show you one of my favorite techniques that I've learned uh, since cooking this way is that I don't use oil. So I have my pan here, it's completely empty, right? And I get, I get it heating, get it nice and hot. And then I'm gonna add my onions, all right? This is the other onion, the other half of the onion. Um, and then I'm gonna add some of the things that have moisture. Now, of course you can add vegetable broth, but, um, and, I and I will add some, but I like to actually saute with tomatoes instead of oil. What? These are just cut up tomato. Um, I take a lot of, eat a lot of tomatoes. And, um, you know, of course you can get your lycopene with tomato sauce and salsa. These are my favorites. 
to keep on hand. Okay, Trader Joe's does not pay me, they should, but. Um, and just keep it on, keep those things and, and include them in your diet. But um, the tomatoes are amazing because they're high in juice. They have a lot of liquid and they're also kind of got a little, uh, I don't want to say, but slimy consistency like oil. They're kind of slippery. So um, that can be a great thing to saute with your onions. So I want to make sure you can see. Can you see now? Yeah. You see Gary? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Hey, okay. Tracy, we're down to, you know, less than five minutes in terms of the um, uh, scheduled time. Um, would you like to open up for questions or how would you like to handle that at this time? Um, wow, yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, go ahead and let's have questions. Um, I can just keep cooking. Um, this is my last recipe I was gonna show you. Well, I had one other recipe I was gonna do with a glaze, but um, I'll send you that recipe. It's super simple. It's just with tempeh. So it's, mm -hmm. um, and I'll, yeah, the glaze here with um, water and the tempeh cubes super fast. So, but I did wanna cover the this and also um, mushrooms high in water. So go ahead and ask questions. Um, if you want, just unmute and just ask your question. Um, and uh, just, Anybody have any questions? And I'm gonna keep cooking. I'm gonna add, um, so when I, I get my veggies in here, I like to add my spices right away because it brings out the flavor. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. add some, uh, this is dried Italian seasoning. I like to be really liberal with it. Uh, and it was just weird. I like curry powder in this a lot. So I add my curry powder in here. And I just start sauteing that and garlic powder. So garlic, of course, regular garlic, garlic powder, garlic powder, onion powder, amazing. Uh, keep them on hand. And then smoked paprika. If you're not familiar with that, it's amazing to add a little flavor. Whew, I just kind of added a lot there. It's gonna be nice and smoky. And this is when I add some liquid. So um, I'll add my broth. So I make my own broth and I'll add that. Oh, it smells so good. And then you add some liquid and then you're just going to add, add your cooked um, grains in here and your lentils. So you just, that's it. It's just uh, get a lot of flavor immersed in here with the, with the broth and all those seasonings or onion. Or, and then you just can decorate it with some uh, tart cherries. These pop in flavor. So uh, dried fruit. I love dried fruit. So good. So do you saw that there's everything has so much nutrition. It's so much flavor. Everyone, you're going to love it. Hey, um, we're almost out of time. Anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, anything they want to say? Um, to oh, Tracy? thank you. Gotta go. Really appreciate it though. Thanks, All right, Paula. thank you. All right, I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to show you guys just while we're going, just a, a little bit of, um, this is the sorghum I cooked that I showed you earlier, that and the quinoa adds a really great uh, texture. Oh, and here's our mushrooms, by the way, roasted mushrooms. So you yeah, saw how yes. easy that was. And this, you can cut these up and put them in salads, quinoa, power bowls, good stuff. Anyway, so everybody keep in touch. Um, sign up for my newsletter. I'll send you uh, all those great resources. I'll send you the recipes, my Tracy's 12, um, and some other great resources I have. And um, if you need cooking online like this, you can reach me at uh, VegAppeal or Tracy'sRealFoods.com. Hey, terrific. Right. Thank you. Thank you very, very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much again for having me, Micah and Gary, and um, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.